Hello, people, and welcome back to the best career in my channel here on YouTube. Today, we are on Opera GX, ladies and gentlemen, and we have the D&D Player's Handbook behind us because today is a slightly different video. We've been uploading a couple Baldur's Gate videos over the past weekend, and they actually done really, really well, surprisingly. As you know, or may not know, Baldur's Gate 3 is releasing August 3rd, ladies and gentlemen, and because I have early access, we actually get it 72 hours beforehand, so it actually releases before August 3rd, but it's coming, and I've been waiting six years for this game, and I'm so, so excited, which is why I've been uploading more and more Baldur's Gate 3 content on the channel, trying to bring in other Baldur's, uh, Baldur's Gate 3 fans so they can watch us and join us along with our journey when we start our full playthrough when the full game releases. So I had this idea of a different kind of video, I don't know if it's even been done yet, on YouTube where we're going to create our first ever Baldur's Gate 3 character. This is going to be the character that we use in the main game for our full playthrough, but we're going to create it now on paper just so when the full game releases, I don't spend hours upon hours in the character creation screen. Because if you played Baldur's Gate 3 in early access, you will know that you can spend literally hours upon hours upon hours on that uh, character creation screen, fine tuning each individual detail of your character before actually starting the game and because we get it 72 uh, hours early i don't want to waste any time i want to get into the game we're going to spend time creating our character we're not going to rush through of course but if we get the basics done now like our race our class our name our background stuff like that at least then it will quicken up the process to create our character and we can smash on with the journey so i also have a sticky notes uh, page uh, right up here as well Baldur's Gate 3 character creation with the race class name age and the background if we need to add anything else we can but i just want to do the basics here today just to get a rough idea of our character now this may change slightly because i'm not fully 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 in on one class just yet so i also want your guys help because with fifa with pairs with other games on the channel you guys always help us out i don't want to continue that in Baldur's Gate 3 with some of the, uh, the decision making of the journey so in the comments down below let me know what race and class you would like us to be and when we decide our race and class if you guys have any better names for the character leave them down in the comments as well and i will pick one of your guys names that you choose for our character to be our name in the full journey so i guess without further ado ladies and gentlemen if you're excited for borders gate 3 leave a thumbs up on the video and let's create our character so part one creating a character so the first thing you do is choose a race. Then you choose a class. Those are the two main things in D&D &D and, of course, in Baldur's Gate. Now, this is D&D &D, uh, 5e, which is loosely what Baldur's Gate 3 is based off. Um, so a lot of the, well, everything from this is in the game as well. So it's really transferable uh, as we go. So first race that is up for grabs is a dwarf race, ladies and gentlemen. Now again, like I said, I already have a rough idea of what race I want to be, and I think a lot of you guys are going to vote for that anyway, but we're going to get to it later on. We're going to read through just key points of each race to build up what uh, potentially could be a fun race to play. Also, if you are getting Baldur's Gate 3, let me know in the comments down below what race and class you're going to be, and maybe you can, you know, sway me in the direction. If your class and race sounds cool, maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll copy you. Bold and hardy, dwarves are known as skilled warriors, miners, and workers of stone and metal. Of course, there's all pictures of what the class looks like as well. Uh, fun fact, I've never actually played as a dwarf uh, yet in Baldur's Gate 3, so it could be a fun a fun one to start with. You know, new for me, I've never done it before, so it could be interesting. Uh, characters of most races are medium, a size category including creatures that are roughly 4 to 8 feet tall. Members of a few races are small, between 2 to 4 feet tall, uh, which means that certain rules of the game affect them differently. The most important of these rules is that small characters have trouble wielding heavy weapons as explained in chapter 6. Your speed determines how fast you can move. There are some of the names. Adric, Alberic, ba Bayern, Brotter. Some interesting dwarf names. Uh, of course, you have different types of dwarf as well. Uh, dwarfs who take out the adventure in life might be motivated by a desire for treasure for its own sake. For a special purpose or even out of its altruistic desire to help others. Dwarfs sound interesting. I've never been in intrigued in dwarfs before, but they seem interesting right now. Of course, after dwarfs, we have elves. Now, elf, I have been elf. Uh, before and I think elves are pretty darn cool. You can see a nice elf there with a double sword I like his uh, gear that he's got on looking very awesome. Now of the elves you have a high elf and a wood elf High elves uh, have a keen mind and mastery of at least the basics of magic in many of the worlds of D&D There are two kinds of uh, high elves one type which includes gray elves and valley elves of gray hawk and that place of dragon lance and the sun elves of the forgotten realms that's the thing too, once you pick your race, there's also sub-races and sub-classes and whatnot to also get stuck involved in. So there's a lot of 
a lot of choices that go into Baldur's Gate 3 character creation. And again, if we get the basics done, at least then it will speed up the process just a little bit on full release. Your dexterity score is increased by two. So they're really good at dexterity, of course, really tall, really nimble. Uh, elves love freedom, variety, and self-expression. Uh, so they can, so they lean strongly towards the gentler aspects of chaos. Interesting. They do have dark vision. We have a bard halfling up next. Small and practical. Different to dwarves. Uh, the diminutive halfling survive in a world full of larger creatures by avoiding notice. Or, barring that, avoiding offense. Standing at three feet tall, they appear relatively harmless. And so they have managed to survive for centuries in the shadow of empires and on the edge of wars and political strife. Halflings has a life as a, as a light foot halfling. You can easily hide from notice, even using other people as cover. That would be pretty cool. You're inclined to be affable and get along well with others. Oh, interesting. So dexterity, of course, because they're small, they're nimble. They can get in band, you know, hide, blend in. Uh, behind anyone. Those have lucky when you roll a one on an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. You can re-roll the die and must use the new roll. That's pretty cool. So if you get a nat one, you get a re-roll. Move through the space of any creature that is of a size larger than yours. So because they're small, they can move through the space of anyone that is bigger than them. So medium or tall, which is really awesome. One of the most common uh, races in all of Baldur's Gate and all on D&D is the human, of course, which we all are, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, humans. So there are stories of rest of people who long ago took to the seas and rivers in longboats, first to pillage and terrorize, then to settle. Your ability scores each increase by one. Humans tend toward no particular alignment. The best and worst are found among them. So it literally is just real life humans. Not much to say about them. We all know what they are. They're humans. And of course, next, ladies and gentlemen, one of the most sought after and excited for races in all of Baldur's Gate 3. This is the one that is top of my list. This is the one I want to be. This is the one we most likely are going to be. I'm going to write it on the sticky note because most likely we are going to be a dragon. That's wrong. A dragon born, ladies and gentlemen. I think most people are excited for the dragon born. They look incredible. They sound incredible. And I think they will be a fun class to play. They're also new. We've not played them in early access yet, so extra excitement for them. They are one of the uncommon races, Dragonborn, Gnome, Half-Elf, Half-Orc, and Tiefling. Uh, some names down here involved, but are not limited to Archan, Balasar, uh, Donar, Gesh, Panjed, Torin. Uh, those are the male ones. Some female ones, Nala, I like, Pera, Tava. Again, if you guys have any good names, leave them in the comments, and maybe we'll choose one of yours. To any Dragonborn, the clan is more important than life itself. Dragonborn owe their devotion and respect to their clan above all else, even the gods. Each clan, each Dragonborn's conduct reflects on the honor of his or her clan, and bringing dishonor to the clan can result in expulsion and exile. So the clan is very, very important. Again, for this character, I want to make a whole background to them. I want to make a whole story, the lore, to our character in BG3. So as we're traversing the land on our journey, we know where this character has been and where they are looking to go. In the Dragonlance setting, the followers of the evil goddess Takesis learned a dark ritual that let them corrupt the eggs of the metallic dragons, producing evil dragonborn called Draconians. Uh, five types of Draconians corresponding to the five types of metallic dragons fought uh, for Takesis in the War of the Lance. Aurochs, which is gold. Bars, which is brass. Bozak, Kapak, and Sivak. In place of their Draconic breath weapons, they have unique magical abilities. Dragonborn are taller and heavier than humans, standing well over six feet tall, just like me, averaging almost 250 pounds, not like me. Uh, the alignment Dragonborns tend to extremes, making a conscious choice for one side or the other uh, in the cosmic war between good and evil. So there's a cosmic war between good and evil, represented by Bahamut and Tiamat, respectively. So good is Bahamut. If you're a good dragon, you go with Bahamut. And if you're an evil dragon, you most likely are uh, worshipping Tiamat. Most Dragonborn are good, but those who side with Tiamat can be terrible villains. That's also a thing. Actually, we should add to our thing is a line, if I can spell, a line, I can't spell, alignment, ladies and gentlemen. Are we going to be a good or evil character in the world of Baldur's Gate 3? So there are different colored dragons you can be. Black, which is acid. Blue, lightning. Brass, fire. Bronze is lightning as well. Copper is acid. Gold is fire. Green is poison. Red is fire. Silver and white are both cold. And uh, for some of them, you get a 15-foot cone of uh, attack and for some you get a 30 foot line so you can either go longer but narrower or shorter but uh, a wider berth so that's also uh, gonna go into depending which dragon colored skin or scales i guess we go for 
You have resistance to the damage type associated with your draconic ancestry. So, for example, if you're a blue dragon with a lightning breath, you have resistance to all lightning damage. I think that is an awesome addition as well. Dragonborn are definitely one of the favored ones, but we'll move on to Gnome, a little ranger gnome down here. Uh, I like gnomes. Your intelligence score. So, what, what, does, what increases for dragon? But I think it was strength, right? Your strength is increased by two and your charisma is increased by one. Interesting. Uh, so, yeah, gnomes have the intelligence by two. They're smart little buggers. It's rare for a gnome to be hostile or malicious unless he or she has suffered a grievous injury. Gnomes know that most races don't share their sense of humor, but they enjoy anyone's company just as they enjoy everything else they set out to do. I like the sound of gnomes. Uh, they've got speed, dark vision, which is nice. They can see in the dark. Dexterity score increases by one if you are a forest gnome. Uh, there's also a rock gnome as well. And next to them, you have the half elf. You can see there, nice looking half elf with his fingers in the sun. Excellent ambassadors are the half elves. Same size as humans, ranging from five feet to ten, six feet. Dark vision, fey ancestry, skill versatility. And those are all the languages that they can speak. Some of the names as well. They have charisma by two. Uh, and two other ability scores of your choice increased by one. So you have charisma by two, and then you choose two abilities that are also increased by one. Fork, another new one involved in Baldur's Gate 3 for release. This will be another interesting one to play as we've not played them in early access before. Each half-orc finds a way to gain acceptance from those who hate orcs. Some are reserved, uh, trying not to draw attention to themselves. A few demonstrate piety and good-heartedness and publicity, and publicly, sorry, as they can. Strength increased by two, constitution by one. Half orcs mature a little faster than humans, reaching out of her around age 14. They're noticeably faster uh, and rarely live longer than 75 years. Menacing, you gain proficiency in the intimidation skill. They have dark vision, they're pretty fast. When you're reduced to zero hit points but not killed outright, you can drop to one hit point instead. You can't use this until you finish along. Interesting. So if you go down to zero, you can go back up to one. We also have the Tiefling. Now, Tiefling's like a fan favorite. I know a lot of people enjoy Tieflings. Um, and I've had a playthrough as a Tiefling. And I can say they are a fun, fun race to be. They also have Dark Vision, Hellish Resistance. You have resistance to fire damage. Internal, uh, Infernal Legacy, sorry. You know that Tormodji... Oh, there's some hard words in Baldur's Gate 3 and D&D. Those are all of the races. Out of all of them, uh, was there Drow? Drow's a race as well. Did we not see Drow or did I go past it? So again, those are all of the races that we have up for grabs. I think Drow was one as well. I might be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure that's a race. Well, it definitely is a race in BG3. Uh, I'm thinking Dragonborn. I've wrote down Dragonborn. Again, this isn't final. This is just so we can get a basis for our character. Just maybe to speed up the process a bit. But I'm thinking Dragonborn. So in the comments down below, let me know if you think we should be a different race. Let me know what colored Dragonborn you would like to be as well. Of course, here are all of the colors. Uh, let me know what, which Dragonborn you would like to be. And now let's move on to the classes. So here are all of the classes in text form. We have Barbarian, Bard, Cleric, Druid, Fighter, Monk, Paladin, Ranger, Rogue, Sorcerer, Warlock, and Wizard. I have a couple of these that I'm thinking we will be, but again, I'm interested to see what you guys think. Barbarian, a fierce warrior of primitive background who can enter a battle rage. Hit die of D12. Primary ability is Strength. A Bard, an inspiring music... An inspiring magician whose power echoes the music of creation. I've never been a Bard before. A Dragonborn Bard could be fun. Monk is a new one uh, that they've recently added in. Uh, Unmaster, isn't it a master? Of martial arts, harnessing the power of the body in pursuit of physical and spiritual perfection. DA, and they have dexterity and wisdom. One of the ones I'm thinking is to be a paladin, a holy warrior bound to a sacred oath. D10, strength and charisma, all armor, shields, simple and martial weapons. I'm thinking paladin and sorcerer are the two that I'm thinking for Dragonborn. Ladies and gentlemen, I like the sound of a paladin, a holy warrior bound to a sacred oath, but then a sorcerer could be fine. It, it, I guess it depends which we are looking for more. Are we going to be like a sword guy, a sword and shield kind of guy? Or are we going to be a, a magey, wizardy, spelly kind of dragonborn? I think that is the main question. Let's dive in deep and see if we can uh, maybe, maybe find one class that we want to be mainly a barbarian could be fun they enter a rage in battle you fight with primal ferocity on your turn you can enter rage as a bonus action while ranging uh, while raging you gain the following benefits if you aren't wearing heavy armor you have an advantage on strength 
checks and strength saving throws. When you make a melee weapon attack using strength, you gain a bonus to the damage roll that increases as you gain levels as a barbarian, as shown in the rage damage column. Uh, which is up there. That can be pretty OP. Entering a rage, not you know, you get that big buff. No one can touch you. You have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. A, a barbarian, a raging dragonborn. Now bards are interesting. Again, I've never been a bard before. Uh, with all of the music and whatnot, but they sound interesting. Bards thrive on stories. Whether those stories are true or not, your character's background and motivations are not as important as the stories that he or she tells about them. Uh, perhaps you have the secure and mundane childhood. A good story. To be told about the... Ah, there's no good story to be told about the story. Interesting. So they're all about stories. Storytelling. They can use some uh, spells as well. Of course, barbarians not really spell people. They do a bardic inspiration, which is a very nice little uh, spell that you can use. I'm interested about bards. I'm very interested. Next, we have clerics. Uh, clerics I'm not really interested in because I uh, they're all about healing stuff. I know Shadowheart is going to be our cleric. Gonna build her up as a cleric, our healer. So if she's in our thing, we'll probably have her. Not too interesting clerics. Maybe if someone's played cleric, they can teach me a bit about it. And maybe it is a really good class that you can be. Monks have this thing that the Larian Studio showed off a bit in uh, the panel from Hell. Deflect missiles. Starting at third level, you can use your reaction to deflect or catch the missile when you are hit by a ranged weapon attack. When you do so, the damage you take from the attack is reduced by 1d10 plus your dexterity modifier plus your monk level. Paladin. Now here's one I'm interested in. Here is one I'm interested in, but it depends which type of paladin would we want to be. They do have lay on hands. Your blessed touch can heal wounds. So it's nice to always have healing in the party. It really is. By second level, you have learned to draw on divine magic through meditation and prayer to cast spells as a cleric does. See chapter 10 for the general. So again, it's, it's kind of similar to a cleric as well in that you can uh, start to learn some spell casting at level two. Up here, we can see level... Uh, divine Sense, Laying Hands, then we have Fighting Style, Spellcast, and Divine Smite, Divine Health, Sacred Oath, uh, Extra Attack, Aura Protection. So you get some decent abilities as you level up. The most important aspect of a Paladin character is the nature of his or her Holy Quest. Although the class features related to your Oath don't appear until you reach third level, uh, plan ahead for that choice by reading the Oath descriptions. I agree. I think we should know which Oath we would be going for. So we have Oath of Devotion. Uh, binds a paladin to the loftiest ideals of justice, virtue, and order, sometimes called cavaliers, white knights, or holy warriors. Uh, these paladins meet the ideal of the knight in shining armor act with honor in pursuit of justice for the uh, and the greater good. So they're the good guys, the knights in shining armor. We also have the Oath of the Ancients. is as old as the race of Elf and the ritual of the Druids. Fey knights, green knights, or horned knights. Paladins who swear this oath cost, uh, cast their lot with the side of the light in the cosmic struggle against darkness because they love the beautiful and life-giving things of the world. Interesting. And then a new one. I don't think this was in early access. The Oath of Vengeance, because they spoke about it in the panel from Hellbell being new, is a solemn commitment to punish those who have committed a grievous sin. When evil forces slaughter helpless villagers, when an entire people turn against the will of the gods, when a thieves' guild grows too violent and powerful, when a dragon rampages through the countryside at times like these paladins arise and swear to the oath of vengeance to set right that which has gone wrong i'm interested in the oath of vengeance there's a new one as well uh they get bane hunter's mark hold person misty step haste oh i'm interested in the oath of vengeance you know be be that good character align with good maybe have a good run and then maybe you know we can have an evil run later on as well who knows a Dragonborn Paladin could uh, could be quite fun, I'm thinking. Right now, Paladin's up there for me. We have Ranger. I don't want to be Ranger because my last playthrough I'd done on Early Access was a Ranger. Um, so I don't want to be a Ranger, but they're really, really cool. Rogues are also really cool, but I don't want to be a Rogue only because I don't... Dragonborn is like this big, dragony. you know. I, I, I either want to be like slashing and dicing. Or a bit of magic with a sorcerer, which we're going to get to. I don't think Rogue really suits a Dragonborn, but another great class. Sorcerer. So, in first level, they have spellcasting, sorcerer's origin, font of magic, meta magic. And then you get some additions as you go. Hit points is 1d6 per sorcerer level. As a starting character, you'll choose an origin that ties to the draconic bloodline or the influence of wild magic. That's another thing. With a sorcerer, one of the subclasses is draconic bloodline. So you can mix a, dr a Dragonborn with the draconic bloodline subclass and have extra cool patterns again stuff from the panel from hell i'm going to also put on the screen throughout this video that you can see that they showed off and they showed off how it looks it looks really darn cool so 
This really intrigues me. Your innate magic comes from the draconic magic that was mingled with your blood or that of your ancestors. Most often sorcerers with this origin trace their descent back to the mighty sorcerer of ancient times who made a bargain with a dragon or who might even have claimed a dragon parent. That's the main thing in, in, in Baldur's Gate. Do you want to be a sword and shield guy? Or do you want to focus on your magic and your spells? Some people love only being mages. Some people love only being a fighter or barbarian sort of character. Um, I'm sort of somewhere in the middle. I can never quite fully commit to one or the other. So it's going to be tough to pick one, I think. You also have wild magic. Now, wild magic, I love. I, I had a run as a wild magic uh, sorcerer before. Uh, and it is a lot, a lot of fun. So basically, um, spell casting can unleash surges of untamed magic. Now, you guys know me. I love randomness. I love hecticness and chaosness. Immediately after you cast a sorcerer spell of first level or higher, the DM will roll a d20. If you roll a 1, roll on the Wild Magic Surge table, which is right here. So, let's say you do a, so a Sorcerer spell. You cast a spell. All of a sudden, you have to roll a d20. If it lands on a 1, then you roll another dice to determine what happens. So, for example, I'm going to pick a random number. You are immune to being intoxicated by alcohol for the next 5 d6 days. Random stuff can happen. You cast Magic Missile as a 5th level spell. Literally, any of these things can happen at any time. So, sometimes they might be good. Sometimes they might be bad. It's all about chaos. And that's why I love the Wild Magic Sorcerer subclass. That if you want to be even more of a uh, wizardy person, before getting to wizard, we have the Warlock. Um, and they have a lot of magic in them as well. Last class, the main wizard class, it is the wizard. Again, this is... Uh, if you're into spells... You want to be a wizard. These guys are all about their spells, all about their sorcery and their spell casting. Wizards, I've had a run as a wizard as well. Very, very fun. Very, very, very fun. But for me, I think it comes down to two. I think it comes down to either a paladin, and I don't know which one. So for now, I'm going to put paladin in brackets vengeance because that was my favorite one. And I'm also going to put sorcerer. In brackets, Draconic. Because I also like that and I've not done the Draconic Bloodline one. So, are the ones that I'm looking at. For the name and age, I'll let you guys choose in the comments down below. Because it depends which race we... Oh, well, we're going Dragonborn mainly. But it all depends. So, I'll let you pick. I think depending on the Paladin or Sorcerer, the name could change. Um, and then we move on to the background. So, again, background is all stuff like your name. If you're a male or female, your height and weight. So, determine height and weight. It says here, Dragonborn. Base height is five foot six. Height modifier is 2d8. Plus 2d8, sorry. And then you do the same for the weight. Interesting. Uh, we have lawful good, neutral good, chaotic good, lawful neutral, and neutral. And then we also have chaotic neutral, lawful evil, neutral evil, and chaotic evil. Again, this depends on which alignment we are trying to go. A typical creature in the words of d d has an alignment which broadly describes its morals, uh, moral and personal attitudes. Alignment is a combination of two factors. One identifies morality, good, evil, or neutral. And the other describes attitude towards society and order. Lawful, chaotic. Uh, so yeah, lawful good. Creatures can be counted on to do the right thing as expected by society. Gold dragons, paladins, and most dwarves are lawful good. Again, if we go as a paladin, most likely will be lawful good. Because normally, uh, paladins are lawful good. They want to, you know, the vengeance one is, if someone's doing something bad, we want to stop them and make sure... They seek vengeance. You have neutral good. Folk do the best they can to help others according to their needs. Many celestials, some cloud giants, and most gnomes are neutral good. CG is creatures act as their conscience directs with little regard for what others expect. Copper dragons uh, are chaotic good. So if we go as a copper dragon, interesting. Lawful neutral individuals act in accordance with law, tradition, and personal codes. Many monks and some wizards are lawful neutral. Neutral is in alignment uh, of those who prefer... Steer clear uh, to steer clear of moral questions and don't take sides. Then you go to the evil ones after chaotic neutral. You have lawful evil, uh, devils, blue dragons, and hobgoblins are lawful evil. Creature, uh, creatures methodically take what they want within the limits of code of tradition, loyalty, or order. So again, if we're going for a blue dragon, we may look to be a lawful evil alignment. Neutral evil um, is many drow, some cloud giants, and yugoloths. And then chaotic evil creatures act. With arbitrary violence spurred with their greed, hatred, or bloodlust. Demons, red dragons, and orcs are chaotic evils. Now, I'm thinking for our full playthrough, we're going to be probably lawful good. Either a gold dragon or a paladin. You know, we're in that that uh, sort of area of lawful good. Again, down the line, we may have another playthrough where we go evil and just go on killing sprees and be absolutely devious. But I think for this one, 
I'm leaning towards lawful good, especially if we go as a paladin. I think it makes most sense. But again, you guys can let me know in the comments down below what you think will be most fun. There are also backgrounds. So every story has a beginning. Your character's background uh, backgrounds reveal, reveal where you came from, how you became an adventurer, and your place in the world. Now, for the backgrounds, we have Acolyte. We have Charlatan. We have a criminal. We have an entertainer. We have a folk hero at the bottom there. We have a guild artisan. Uh, then we move on to a hermit. We have a noble. We have an outlander. We have a sage, and we have a sailor and soldier. And at the end there, we have an urchin. Now, I think for backgrounds, we're going to leave that up to interpretation because I think that fully determines on where we go with the character. The main things for this video I wanted to get off our chest uh, was the uh, race, the class, and then based on that, with your comments, we can decipher the name, age, and background. Uh, I'm thinking the alignment is going to be lawful good if... We go with a paladin, but then that could change if we go with the sorcerer. So again, that can be left up to interpretation. But I think that uh, this was just a fun little video to have. I just want to keep making Baldur's Gate content. Honestly, it's all I can think of in the past few weeks is Baldur's Gate 3. So I want to make as many videos on it as possible. The past couple done amazing. Hopefully this one does well as well. And I'm really interested in hearing what characters you guys are going to make. Because some of you have been commenting on older videos of the Baldur's Gate 3 videos on the channel. And telling me what characters you're going to make. And they sound incredible they really really do we also have a discord i'm gonna make a Baldur's gate 3 uh, channel in our discord so in the link in the description feel free to join our discord we're gonna have a bg3 specific channel where you can talk about bg3 and your character your journey and stuff like that and meet other friends that play bg3 and maybe even start a party with them play online with them Maybe I'll play with you. Who knows? So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you have enjoyed this video a little behind the scenes of what's to come for the character creation. When we start a full playthrough, episode zero is going to be the character creation. And then after that, we're going to start on our journey. They're going to be long videos, awesome journeys, epic, uh, epic battles, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. It's going to be the longest series we've ever done in this channel. And I just want to play the full release today. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Harry Tuvi, also known as Reinskid, and I'm signing out. But bye for now. Much of as always, take care and peace. Mm -hmm.